Hello, 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 and welcome back to the library. It's open, so I hope you brought your library card, darling. Um, something a bit different this time. Um, I say a bit different, as though I've never done one of these before, but they are quite spasmodic. Um, so we're going to have a haul video, <gasps> um, which I did a couple of these roughly at the start of when like lockdown started. Um, oh, I thought I had a teaspoon. I don't. I'll suffer. Um, just showing you sort of what books I'd hauled and what I was going to be reading in the coming weeks and so on and so forth. And um, my intention was to do a sort of end of lockdown haul, but with nothing clear in sight in that respect. Um, let's call this an end of summer book haul. Um, so quite a lot of books to talk about. Um, again, as with other haul videos I've done, I won't necessarily talk about all these in depth on in, in separate videos and so on and so forth so I'll tell you a little bit about them and um, some of them you will see discussions of and some you won't okay so um, oh yeah full disclosure I have read some of these already but they do sort of comprise like the whole overall it's a little rhyme there um, over the last couple of months so it might look like there's a lot but this is accumulated so uh, let's start with the ones that I have read, shall we, already. And uh, first up is, in no particular order, by the way, uh, I Saw Him Die by Andrew Wilson, which is, uh, this is book four in a series of, um, well, books, um, which has as its protagonist uh, the author, Agatha Christie, recast as like a sort of detective. So it's kind of unofficial this series in the sense that it's not endorsed by the Agatha Christie estate or anything um, but it sort of imagines what would happen if Agatha Christie um, became a detective alongside her writing so in these series of books she works with the um, the intelligence service um, I think I believe the impetus for the first one which was I think it was a talent for murder was her infamous disappearance um, for many days back in the 20s where nobody knew where she was and it's sort of the first book imagined what happened to her as if you know she was involved in a crime plot and then it's sort of gone on from there and they use the basic facts or rather Andrew Wilson as the author does uses the basic facts of her life so like she was in these places and then just imagines what might have happened um, if if she was in fact investigating crimes. This one's interesting, um, it's set on the Isle of Skye just before Agatha Christie marries her second husband Max in Edinburgh and uh, this is about the death of a, um, a retired British secret agent and it also involves the nursery rhyme who, shot, uh, who killed Cock Robin uh, which is really interesting because Agatha Christie was often fascinated with nursery rhymes and a lot of her books, um, Hickory Dickory Dark, One Two Buckle My Shoe, Crooked House, so on and so forth, feature nursery rhymes as major plot points. So it's a nice little nod there. So really enjoyed this one, love this series. Um, fabulous. Probably also be featured in an upcoming video I'm going to do called Cozy Crime, which are like my favourite um, sort of crime mystery thrillers, but um, you know, the sort of cosy golden age style ones so that's I saw him die and uh, next up some more crime which will be in a video uh, forthcoming uh, this is Attica Locks the cutting season which uh, is about a murder on a plantation in Louisiana um, she has four other books I believe I think she won um, or she was shortlisted for the uh, it's the orange prize yeah for this this there's um, I think two series with two books each that she's got out at the moment, but this is a much more sort of contemporary crime novel, um, still with elements of, you know, sort of golden age fiction and that, but more up to date. Uh, so I really enjoyed this one, but keep your eyes peeled for the full review video. Uh, in that video, speaking of which, I also talk about this one, which is a beautiful, whimsical little story about murder and really um, quirky, idiosyncratic characters. So this is Of Murder, Muses and Me by Claudia Chibichi Revnianu. I think that's the correct pronunciation. I have had a look, but I'm not sure. Um, and this is delightful. This is about the death of um, our protagonist's uh, favorite author, which is ruled as a suicide, but she has other ideas. And it's 
an interesting take on the murder mystery genre and uh, definitely a bit of a book lover's kind of, she's like a, uh, she's a PhD student, our protagonist, and there's a lot of stuff about why literature is wonderful and, you know, just like a little Aladdin's cave of, of, of literary allusions in this, so this was lovely. Uh, staying on the crime theme, there, there is a theme to this and it wasn't even intentional, but there we go. Uh, we have The Killings at Kingfisher Hall by Sophie Hannah. Now this is also book four in a series of new Poirot mysteries that um, are licensed by uh, Agatha Christie's estate and Sophie Hannah is sort of the ghostwriter, if you will, and she revisits um, the character of Hercule Poirot at different points in his career. Uh, the first one was, I believe, the monogram murders, and then let me just check. Yeah, then there was Closed Casket, The Mystery of Three Quarters, and then this one, The Killings at Kingfisher Hall. Uh, Sophie Hannah's really, um, someone at the window there, Sophie Hannah's really good at capturing Agatha Christie's style while making it very much her own, but you know, the characters are very recognisably those that we know and love, so this was a fantastic read that I really enjoyed. Did it in a day, a day! Sorry for that brief pause there, I decided I had to go and chop down that teaspoon because otherwise I wouldn't be able to have my brew and, you know, it's no contest, does it? Um, oh, that's better. Yes, so to continue, and again, staying with the same genre, uh, this is a debut novel by Alex Pavesi called Eight Detectives, which uh, was delightful actually, and is about an author who once wrote a book called The White Murders, way back in the 30s, I believe it was, the 1930s, and uh, years later, and 30 years later, I believe, a somebody who works for a publishing company comes to visit him on an island to discuss um, his the PhD, or rather the thesis that he wrote alongside the book, which talked about how to work out um, how murder mysteries operate um, in a mathematical way, so in ter terms of like the perm different permutations of how stories can go about suspects, killers, detectives, so on and so forth. But in the meantime, um, she uncovers maybe a bigger mystery going on in the background. Uh, this is really interesting because interspersed between the chapters of what's going on in the, mo the present day, we get each of the stories that were in the book that he wrote originally. It's really sort of meta kind of, it reminded me a little bit of um, Rules for Perfect Murders, although the plot's not the same um, that I've discussed in the past, so this was this was really nice. If you're into detective fiction, this is like a love letter to it, and look at that beautiful cover. That's gorgeous, isn't it? But that's nice. So moving away, finally, from the traditional detective murder mystery genre, um, we have this one, which was something of a curiosity, and I just, I loved the cover. Um, so this is a True Story, by Katie Reed Petty, um, which is a 2020 novel, um, and um, at first I thought that actually maybe she'd published four different covers um, when I saw it on the Waterstones website, but then when I went in, this is actually the cover. It's also signed by her as well, um, which I, I really like having author's signatures on. Um, and look at those inside, and inside the French flap, look at that, beautiful. So this is about a, um, sorry I had to reset there, um, this is about a, a private school girl in um, in America and uh, she believes that she has been assaulted by two members of this lacrosse team at a party, well on the way home from a party. Um, and it sort of traces the impact that has on her life as she tries to um, process that but there's also the proviso in the background that nobody really knows what happened and you know who's the author of of the truth behind what went on it's fascinating it's presented in sort of mixed media so um you know one of the sections is a series of drafts of her college essays uh, some are movie scripts um some are emails like email records dating back um, months and months and months and um, we sort of follow the progress of this journey over the course of many years and see what the ramifications are and, and hopefully by the end, no spoilers, uh, figure out what actually happened. Uh, it really it really raised interesting uh, questions I thought about the nature of violence or violation more 
uh, broadly in the sense that obviously we understand on a physical level what you know violence and 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 assault is, but you know maybe there's something it's something about um, the violence of conjecture or deliberate misinformation and so on and so forth. It's a really, really big thinker uh, and a really interesting debut novel. Really enjoyed this. Um, on that theme, this is, um, I was going to do a video about this, but actually I'm not, I don't think, because I think a lot of people have already talked about this on the, um, on the YouTube and elsewhere. On the YouTube, how old am I? Um, this is, uh, My Dark Vanessa, which is one of the, um, the pull quotes on the front was the book everyone will be talking about, and, and I really enjoyed this. I thought it was really, really interesting. So this is about a, um, a woman called Vanessa who was who had a relationship with her English teacher when she was 15 at a boarding school and um, we follow sort of two dual timelines one of her at 15 her starting this um, relationship with her teacher um, and then one in the present day where somebody else another former student of this teacher has come forward and said that he assaulted her uh, but this, it's this weird quagmire of uh, Vanessa not believing that what happened to her was abuse and believing that she was in a romantic relationship with this person and it's about the, the power dynamics and, and who has control, who can give consent and so on and so forth and I believe this was written at the height of the uh, the Me Too movement um, so I think it was 2017 I think that was uh, although it was only published last Year. No, this year. I do apologise. This year. Um, and it's a fascinating read that asks, uh, has a lot of questions to ask about perception and um, what, what we believe versus what is objective truth and so on and so forth. It's, um, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. Um, very much enjoyed this one. Um, next up is two from the same series, um, which I have to talk about together because, um, as I said, they're part of a trilogy, the third part of which comes out next year, I believe. Uh, these are YA novels. Uh, the first is Girls of Paper and Fire and the sequel Girls of Storm and Shadow. I am going to do a review about this because I thought they were really, really important um, touchstones because they're sort of classed as young adult YA fiction, but I think they're skewing more to the A than the Y um, and they have a lot of questions to ask although it is sort of based in fantasy um, there's a lot of uh, stuff that's relevant to our world if you will um, really well written um, this was recommended a lot and I sort of half skeptically picked up a copy because I'm not a huge fan of YA uh, fantasy series per se um, but this this really really impressed me and it's also a uh, UK based author uh, Natasha I think it's Ngan um, Celeste Ng was little fires everywhere so Ngan uh, I will check that pronunciation before I do a full video I do apologize um, who is a Chinese Malaysian um, author who brought up in the UK and I believe currently lives in Paris um, but this is a beautiful depiction of a world not too dissimilar for our own and um, where humans are, human girls, sorry, are chosen eight every year to become concubines to the, um, to the ruler and um, what happens when one of them becomes involved with uh, one of her fellow paper girls. So there's a queer element as well and um, I think it had a really interesting good points to say about consent and um abuse but in a way that doesn't feel exploitative it feels more like issue raising uh, so i really 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 enjoyed this i haven't read the sequel yet but i am going to make the video at some point keep your eyes out for that um what else we got oh this is beautiful this book is beautiful look at that that's gorgeous look at that cover beautiful and this is also signed by the author this is a um a series of short stories which are based on i believe classic stories of um from myth mythology and legend 
uh, but sort of retold in the present day um, and um, featuring people of colour. And this is the debut novel by Bolu Babalola. I hope that's the correct pronunciation. Um, who, yes, I remember this now. She wrote a short story called Netflix and Chill. Um, and uh, I think that did pretty well online. She won a competition with it. And uh, this is her sort of debut collection, if you will. And I'm really looking forward to reading this. I think it's beautiful. You know, like you're not supposed to judge them by their covers, but we all do. So looking forward to getting to that one. Uh, another one with a beautiful cover is this one by Emma Donoghue, um, who wrote uh, Room, I think it was, and was it The Wonder? The Wonder, I do apologise. This is called The Pull of the Stars, and this one is set in the early 20th century in Dublin at the height of the Spanish flu, as I understand. I think it's the Spanish flu, um, but it centres around three, three nurses. Um, I'm not going to lie, I was very drawn to this again by the cover, but I do think it's going to be really interesting because it's not necessarily something I would normally pick up to read about. Um, um, and again, obviously it deals with a pandemic, um, so I don't know what that experience is going to be like, but I'm interested to find out. So, uh, don't worry, we're nearly done, I promise. Um, Yes, okay, fabulous. So this is Faux by Ian Reid, which I picked up on the strength of a forthcoming video I've done about um, his novel, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which is a thriller, and it's coming soon to Netflix as well, starring Jesse Buckley. Uh, this is his second book, as I understand it, um, and apparently it is just as compelling as uh, I'm Thinking of Ending Things. Um, so, looks good. And we're on the home stretch now. Um, so, what to talk about next? Yes, this one. I've covered the fact that I haven't even taken the price label off yet. Or the buy one, get one free label, I should say. Uh, so, this is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgan Stern. This is the second novel, I believe. The first was The Night Circus, which I haven't read. But I was just a little bit obsessed with this cover, I'm not going to lie. Uh, this is, um, I don't know an awful lot about it because I believe it's quite a tricksy novel in terms of um, straightforward plot line, which is fine. Um, so I'll read you a little bit at the back, which says, uh, When Zachary Rawlins stumbles across a mysterious library book containing details from his own life, it leads him on a quest like no other. Following the clues inside, he's guided to a masquerade party, he's guided even, uh, a dangerous secret club and finally to a labyrinth filled with stories hidden far beneath the surface of the earth. Uh, this got a lot of press, I believe, and a lot of reviews on Booktube, and I just think it's it's gorgeous. Um, and, you know, if I'm honest as well, I needed the buy one, get one half price offer, so I went for this, because it, it intrigued me sufficiently. So, I'm going to give this a bash. Um, Mixed reviews, I'll be honest. Um, I think some people have loved it and some people have very much disliked it, but I don't have anything to compare it to, having not read the uh, debut novel, The Night Circus, so I can go into it with fresh eyes. Um, another one that has great reviews is this one, uh, which is called Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keane. And this is set in upstate New York, uh, and about two families, the Gleasons and the Stanhopes. Um, and it says on the back, when a terrible tragedy engulfs them all, the families are divided seemingly for good until their children meet again as adults and the violence of past events must be vanquished by the power of love. Uh, now, I don't know an awful lot about this, but I did see a review on the cover by Lisa Tadio, um, who wrote Three Women, which I really loved. And she said it's a must read for our time. Um, it's good enough for me. Uh, there's also been a lot of comparison to... Um, Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. Moriarty, sorry, I do apologise. I don't want to get sued. Um, so that's good enough for me. I'm, I'm willing to check this out. And I love this when they do this. Look, it's got like double cardboard in the front of the book. You know, with all the reviews on and stuff. I love that. It's a nice touch, isn't it? Nearly done, I swear. Um, do, 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 do. This one, uh, Love After Love by Ingrid Persaud, which I picked up on recommendation of Simon from Savage Reads, which is a brilliant channel, you should check him out. Uh, this is about an unconventional family led by Betty, her shy son Solo, and their lodger Mr Cheetan. Um, 
And apparently all's going really well until one night they have a heart to heart over a glass of rum and a terrible truth explodes the fam explore explodes explodes the family unit driving them apart. Um, again, some beautiful cover art there. And apparently this is wonderful. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting to this one as well. So that's love after love. Last couple now. This one is really eagerly anticipated. It was coming out this year. This is by Zalika Reed Benta, and it's called Frying Plantain. I had this on pre-order. This is how much I was really looking forward to it. Um, and it's about a girl called Kara, who apparently is caught in the middle of her Canadian nationality and her desire to be a true Jamaican. So I think that's really interesting in terms of, I'm, I'm very much interested in reading as you know we've sort of talked about in the past diverse narratives diverse experiences um and work that explores ideas around origin and identity and so on and so forth so i definitely think i'll make a video about this one um and i'm just really looking forward to getting stuck into that which is nice uh last second to last i should say now this is an interesting one and i actually bought this on the recommendation of one of my work colleagues who uh, is a relation. I can't remember if it's a familial relation or just like a relation through friendship of the author. Um, we're going to do a video about it to discuss our, our thoughts. And, and this is Jack and Bet by Sarah Butler. And this is about uh, a couple called Jack and Bet and uh, the relationship they strike up with a young Romanian woman. And... Um, Apparently it's about, you know, their marriage and ideas around home and what that means and so on and so forth. But it's it's supposed to be beautiful. My, my work colleague um, raved about it, uh, not just because of that connection. So I'm looking forward to discussing this. Um, I am going to do that more, by the way, moving forward. Have videos where I'm in discussion with people about books. Uh, the first one I do of those will obviously be... My darling Paul from Those Vegan Guys, which I'm very much looking forward to, and you can look out for that coming soon. Uh, but I am going to try and mix things up with that. And finally, but by no means least, this is what I'm currently reading. I just started it today, actually. And it's called Nothing Can Hurt You by Nicola May Goldberg. And this is about um, a student uh, in who was killed in 1997. It's fiction. Um in upstate New York and her boyfriend confesses to the murder but he was um, he's found not guilty for reason of um, temporary insanity I think is that the what the defense is called um, yes temporary insanity and then it's about the ripples that this murder has in um, both the local community and the wider community and a lot of people uh, what their sort of reactions and responses are and how it's impacted them throughout their lives um, so, so far, so good. I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, as I say, you can probably tell there's been very much a sort of overarching theme in this um, in terms of, of what I've been gravitating towards. But also because of, I, I suppose, what's being released at the moment um, and, you know, the kind of novels that I guess people are hunkering down with at the moment, which tend to be... <sighs> I don't know, maybe it's something about crime thriller when it's literary or fictional and so on and so forth there's an element of control over that you're sort of controlling your own uh interaction with potentially scary things which you know in the sort of time of events that feel like they're constantly spiraling out of control a little bit of safe threat through fiction or through tv whatever is maybe you know subconsciously something that we gravitate towards um so that's me too penneth on that but I hope you enjoyed this haul, um, and just ch just to mix things up a bit. Normal service will be resumed in the next episode, uh, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, I may also do, I'm debating doing a, a video about upcoming releases for the rest of the year, um, which ones I'm most excited about, so if you think that'd be fun, um, uh, let me know. Uh, and I will absolutely do that. You know, I'll troll through the internet tirelessly for you. kidding it's a pleasure so with that said the library is now closed on this hall so put your library cards safe do drop a comment and a like if you liked and or wish to comment if you don't then don't it's a free world i like you anyway 
Uh, much love to you all. Thank you so much for tuning in and sticking with me as I waded through this mountain of books. Do look after yourself. Do stay safe out there. Um, let's look out for each other and, um, you know, keep our fingers crossed that the end is nigh. We shall see. All right, lots of love, my darling bookworms. See you soon. Mwah.